Hi, it's Bernie Goldbach on the 25th of July, 2010. Looking at Beauty and Decay, available in August from copperbombingculture.co.uk. It's part of a series of images that are in the Sunday Times magazine and also that are part of my quick clip, my quick news, looking at Horabi today and the Sunday newspapers. You can see pictures at insideview.ie where I blog or on flickr.com stroke photo stroke Irish eyes. Questions that Lorcan Roach would, uh, would raise inside the Financial Times magazine is, would you actually pick up on somebody who's reading their book that way through an iPad or an iPhone? Or if you're at the beach, would you rather chat up somebody, a beautiful woman, who might be looking up from her book Interesting little way of viewing paper over pixels as an issue of the way we interact with our technology. More on technology in a few minutes. We're on heading on in to Horabi, where in the 1200s, the Benedictine Order established a really nice little edifice still standing today across the street from where I live. Before we get into Horabi, let's pause for a thought for off-message Jen. That's Jennifer O'Connell. She writes in the Sunday... Um, Business Post, Agenda Magazine, and she's writing about commodities. Jennifer, big word here. Commodities make healthier pensions. I mean, like years ago, when the monks and the bishops ran this place, they dealt in commodities. Rock Cashel wouldn't have been an edifice worth visiting unless you had things to trade like milk, butter, meat. Commodities are what you short if you're a farmer. You're involved in cocoa, corn, soybeans. And commodities trading makes pensions more profitable. Those are important messages, ones I think maybe the discussion best be left to economists. But we have more discussions inside Whore Abbey, dedicating this time to the most handsome people in the world, Damien Mully and Zaniac and the Chicanery, who are stuck in London, unable to get these Sunday, Sunday papers. So, a little bit of news for them and for anybody else who wishes to watch www.insightview.ie for the video clip audiboo.fm stroke top gold for the audio hey when they first built these walls in the 1200s how would you predict the future the undercover economist is asking that question you know what Tim Hartford his book Dear Undercover Economist addresses the fact that uh, if you're listening to tweets and you're listening to social media you're listening to the internet you actually might be able to pull in real time data one guy I recommend you listen to, Stephen Kinsella. And look at this. Cars. Echo cars. This is pretty clever. It's the Vauxhall Ampera. The only really question that John Griffiths raises in the FT magazine is, can you afford it? Even a three-hour dalliance or dalliance with a socket kicks the batteries back to life. That's something you can't do with a Mini. More stories coming up inside the Financial Times and the Sunday Business Post. Starting now with three papers. And Daily Mail talks about, we'll never stop the boy racers. Wankers. Grim warning from the Garda traffic chief who says, speeding youths are now part of our culture. Here's some more wankers. Wankers had to be handcuffed in court because they're so rude to the judge. People that are accused of stealing money and threatening behavior. Wankers. Making donuts on the road outside and acoustically damaging my environment. Lighter up, let's go diffin, is what it says. Stephen McGuire and, and Stephen McGuire, uh, Steve McGuire and Karen Rice make the point that there's a culture up there in Donegal, a culture that has to be embraced. Wrong word. Culture has to be attacked. Where people think racing culture, the ability to just go out and on the road, carry your pit babes with you, and just make a menace of yourself. Backstory. Eight people died in a car driven by a guy that shouldn't have been out there, diffing with his mates. Eight people died. Mr. Kelly, behind the wheel, survives. A year ago, three years ago, he was done for a thousand euro fine at the Donegal District Court for dangerous driving. Wankers. If you don't deal with it, they become a blight on your own culture. We have to deal with it. It's unacceptable, lads. Unacceptable in Ireland, but hey, there'll be plenty more special investigations with deaths on the bonnets and inside of cars before things change. The wind noise you hear inside War Abbey. FT Weekend gives a front page story to Libya. BP actually did, did lobby the Libyans for the release of Lockerbie Bomber. 
Inside the paper, innovation, ebooks debate. It's a news analysis piece by Esther Bintleth saying how the market for ebooks is in its infancy. Reading habits are shifting. How about this? Offer free iPads to library patrons. What patrons? Watch a result. A technician is telling of disabled alarms. Sheila McNulty in Houston has a story. Those are alarms aboard the water, deep water horizon. Alarms that did sound, but everyone ignored them or didn't sound because they were shut off. Department of Interior failed to perform some safety inspection on the rig before it happened. And the Gulf of Mexico is polluted. Senators in the United States are defying climate setback. Edward Luce in Washington, Fiona Harvey in London points out that there's no enthusiasm for another energy bill that would boost subsidies for alternative energies without mandating carbon emissions reductions. Basically means Mr. Obama is stuck with environmental blight on his echo credentials. Inside the business section of the FT Weekend, Ericsson holds on for revival, but there's a demand for 3G antennas that aren't coming up to speed. Surging use of wireless Internet access services with things like the iPhone and the iPad, they're seen in uh, the actual operator's usage, but there's no big demand for third-generation mobile equipment to grow as steadily as the 2G equipment is declining. So that's going to hurt Ericsson's share price. Front page of the Sunday Business Post, article by Pat Lee. The fourth austerity budget in three years is causing a lot of tension around the cabinet table. Check this out. David Clerton, Clerken points out austerity measures, which are forcing the central bank to withdraw 23 million euro worth of coins from circulation. It's people like myself breaking the piggy banks to make ends meet. Red Cross is taking Google to court over critical postings on a blog, says Pat Lee. Red Cross is beginning legal action because of an anonymous blogger that's criticizing the Irish Red Cross. Let's see where that goes. Can't have an opinion. They certainly aren't living in a free society. Developers are flexing their muscles with Namos, says Gavin Daly. Surprises me, Bernard McNamara is reportedly seeking a 300,000 euro salary from Nama to help his uh, empire recover. There's a great state fire sale, says Richard Kern. He can ignore most of this, except for this point. Shannon Airport could be amalgamated into a regional company, which would also include Shannon Foyne's port and Shannon Development. That might make sense. Back of the paper, opinion section, David Williams says, the RSI has got it all wrong. That's what Paul Krugman says. Krugman, a Nobel Prize winner in economics, took the ERSI to task. That's the Economic Social Research Institute in Ireland. They really don't know what they're doing, he says. They're using, um, you know, assertion, not real quantitative analysis. Why not just close the ERSI? What would happen to that? It's all part of a meltdown theme I think runs throughout the Irish papers. In the grip of the people, Lee, the political editor of the Sunday Business Post, says that the economy and the country is crippled because us, the voters, prioritizing that if you're elected as a politician, you look after the constituency above all else, that you accept the demands of whatever interest group is, ap is amplified by an uncritical media. People make the decision to elect politicians that just rep for them, bring representations for them without a national agenda at heart. Keeping track of one's loved ones is made easier, says James Enright. A good technology piece, Adrian McGibbon, founder of Swish, is a GPS tracker, one, uh, a little device that can be contacted and located with a call to a, to a phone number. Making a splash in business, Nicola Cook brings out the article from Dave Golding, founder of Raincatcher, Rainwater Harvesting. Clever echo idea, don't you think? Check it out. More Abby. Hope you visit sometime. My blog, www.insideview.ie. My Twitter neck is Topgold. I'll share all this lovely architectural information with you, including in the future some headstones and some digital artifacts of our past. From here in Windy, War Abbey, County Contemporary, Ireland, it's Bernie Box saying thanks a million for listening. Bye for now.